everyone and welcome to week two. I'm Jennifer Charrington, your instructor for GRA 220. I've really enjoyed getting to kind of meet you guys over the icebreaker discussion board and I'm looking forward to actually diving in and getting to see some of your work. I wanted to do a little video introduction and kind of get to know you guys a little bit more and so you could actually see or hear me and introduce you guys to Photoshop. I know some of you have experience with it and it's no big deal and I know some of you are more brand new to Photoshop. So I want to even out the playing field and I'm going to do a brief introduction but if you're looking for a more in-depth introduction please send me an email and I can do uh, an entry kind of tutorial on that for you. So let's get started and look in Photoshop. You've got your toolbar over here and if you just hold your mouse over any of the tools it'll tell you the name of the tool and a hotkey for it. Uh, a lot of times as you're working in Photoshop it's really nice to use the hotkeys. At first you know you want to get to know the tools and figure out what they do but once you get that down you're really going to want to start using the hotkeys. It speeds up the time, makes it a lot easier. If there's a little triangle under the tool, if you click and hold, you can see that there are actually more tools underneath it. So it might look like a little bit of a smaller toolbar, but almost all the tools have hidden tools underneath. Okay. Let's take a look at, you know, kind of what I'm looking for in this module two assignment section. I just took a picture of our books and one of your assignments is going to be to use the crop tool. So your crop tool is actually this one, two, three, fifth tool down. Um, and the hotkey is the letter C for crop. So you can click on it or hit the letter C and you'll see it creates this kind of bounding box showing you where your image actually ends. You can also look at the top here and you can see that our crop tool is activated and right now it's just on a random ratio which means I can click and drag and kind of do whatever ratio that I'm looking for. Because we're not scaling it doesn't have to be to an exact proportion. If you were scaling you always want to scale proportionally. I never want to see anything stretched or squashed that's just not allowed. So, but when we're cropping, you can kind of create whatever section you want to focus in on. Maybe I really like this section over here. I can click and drag and scale down. You can see that it actually is telling us the dimensions of our crop, which is a kind of nice benefit. Um, you can go to where it says ratio and change it. If you knew you wanted a square, you know, you can, this won't let you now scale out of proportion. So we've got this square here. You can also, once you've selected the size, click and drag to move around your piece. So maybe if you knew you wanted a square, but oh, I'm not sure if I like this square, moving it over, you can play around with it that way. Okay. Um, you can always then go back to original ratio if you want, which is the size of our actual piece. And then if you look at the top here, you can reset the crop box, you can cancel the crop, or you can accept. Okay. If you want to accept, you can also just hit enter on the keyboard, whatever works best for you. So I'll just hit enter, and we can see we have our nice cropped piece. If I hit C for crop again, um, you'll notice that we can crop, but we've lost all of the extra information. So if you wanted to undo that, um, you would have to hit Control Z, which is undo or go to edit, undo. I guess I'll just undo it that way. Um, when you're in the crop tool, you have to actually accept it before you can undo or move forward. So you can see here it says crop preview because it's not actually cropped. So I'm going to hit enter. Now I can do edit, undo, or control Z. Now with Photoshop, if you hit control Z over and over, 
nothing is going to really happen because you're just undoing and redoing. Undoing and redoing. I'm not sure why Photoshop decides to be different than every other program, but to undo multiple times, you're going to do uh, Command Option Z. Okay, and that'll bring it back. You can always go step forward, step backwards. Okay, so that's the crop tool. Um, and we can go into more details with anything in Photoshop. If anyone wants, you know, a real basic tutorial, whatnot, again, feel free to just ask. So I'm going to um, bring back my original image. There we go. Now, layer order matters. Whatever layer is on the top is the one that's going to be seen and is the most important. So when I'm dealing with filters or effects, which is another part of your Module 2 assignment, sometimes I like to do a copy of my layer so I can see what's being affected, etc. So if I click on my layer and drag it to the new layer button, which looks like a sheet of paper, you can again hold your mouse over it and it'll tell you, let's create new layer, um, and it will come on top. Now, right now, they're the exact same, so if I hide the layer, nothing changes. But let's double click on the title and change it. I'm going to call it filter. Labeling your layers is a really good idea. You're going to end up with projects that have so many layers and when you want to fix one little thing it's going to be hard to kind of organize unless they're all named. Trust me, if you don't already do it, you should do it. So let's look at some filters, okay? I'm going to click on my filter layer and I can go up here to the top We've got all these different options. This is one of those things that you might want to play around with some of them, see what they do, see what they look like, um, and then find out what you like. We can also go to this filter gallery. This one's kind of nice because it previews different filters for you. I'm going to zoom out with hitting uh, Command and the minus key. Can hit the plus to zoom in, just so we can see our whole image here. And you can just click on these different kind of artistic filters and see what they do. Now, I wouldn't recommend just doing one filter as is and calling it a day. You can create some awesome work this way, but you're an artist. You want to play around with what Photoshop has to offer. You don't want to just do the basics that Photoshop can do. So to twirl down on these, you just need to click on the names, and I'll show you all the options. Okay, so I would, I would click around on these, see what you like, see what works well again, but then look into these options. You can change things, so cell size. So we can crank that up, it becomes a very abstract piece. Uh, the smaller the cells, of course, the, more, the closer it is to the original image. Oh, I think I might have frozen it. Here we go. Um, now you're getting more of like a weird snakeskin looking effect. But definitely just try a bunch of different options. Okay? I'm going to hit OK to just set this one as is. Now if I turn on and off the eyeball, I can see, okay, there's my original and there's with my filter. But maybe on that, I want to add some other filters. Maybe on top of it, I want... Hmm, Let's see how an emboss would look. Okay, it's a good thing to check different options out because some don't work well with one colored image. Some you need multiple things. So looking at this one, I can still see some of my texture here, but it kind of ruins my image. So I don't think I'm going to do that one. And just try different things. You never know what you're going to find. Let's also take a look at some of these effects. I'm going to do a new layer and just a text so you guys can see a little bit. And let's just, I'll write Photoshop. Um, I'm going to make it white so we can see it a little bit better. Okay, so Photoshop. Now, what these effects are, they're down in the bottom of your layers palette. So if I click on that, 
I see I've got some new options here. You can always click on blending options. That kind of shows you everything that we can do in this effects tab. So let's do an outer glow, for example. So you can click on the checkbox, but then you also want to click on the word to bring up the options for it. Let's make this a color so we can actually see what's going on. And you want to make sure your preview is turned on. I'm going to bring up the opacity. You can kind of see with text, an outer glow is going to kind of look like a stroke. But you can play around with all different you know, spread, how far away do you want it to go, how bright do you want it to be, the opacity, do you want it to be subtle, all that kind of stuff. You can do a drop shadow. Um, I wouldn't recommend that you always, you know, do drop shadows or even any of these things. But again, things to know that you have in your toolbox that you can use when it comes time. If you're like, I, man, I have this awesome image, but I just wish it looked a little bit more blank. That's why we're learning all these basic things so you know where to go to when you have a vision. Okay. So just a basic introduction to kind of what I'm looking for this week in Module 2. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions, and I look forward to seeing some work from you guys. Talk to you later.